you haven't, and share this with anyone who you think needs to hear this message. Also, if you want to support the channel, you can click the join button, become a member, and get access for free to the exercise performance course where I teach you to squat, bench, deadlift, shoulder press, do pull-ups, and dips. Not only that, but you will also get the audiobook of the Book of Puck, narrated by me. And also the exclusive podcast for members, The Coffee Cast, where we do weekly Q&As. Now that we've had that out of the way, let's be... Birth control makes women unattractive and crazy. She said it, not me. Just saying. Hello, everybody. Please be so kind to smash the like button. Before we begin, I want to congratulate Chris, who is here, and John, who will probably be here soon to ruin my day, with their squat PRs this week. Chris, here, is at an 88 kilo squat, around a body weight of 65 kilos, and we are, well, the aim was 90 kilos for the end of the year, but since it's already November, we might, we might, Chris, Go for triple digits. We might, but we're not going to get ahead of ourselves. We are slowly but surely following the program, going with it. But it is amazing what you have accomplished. And John Watts has a 280-pound squat, which kind of leaves me right now at the moment for kilos. But that is around... 315 is 140. That is 130. That is still a very good squat. That is around 120, 125, which is amazing. My clients are getting there and kicking ass, which I'm very proud of. And I wanted to say 130. Thank you. Which I wanted to mention and wanted to say. Now, if you are interested in becoming a client of mine, unfortunately, right now, the spots for the monthly accountability program are full. But if you want to stay updated on when a spot will be available for the monthly accountability program, you can sign up for the email newsletter, get the exercise performance course for free, and be updated on when a spot is available for the monthly accountability program. However, do not apply. If you are not serious, I have now implemented a new rule that the first, if you fail to send me form videos for three consecutive weeks or two weeks and do not show up at a consultation, I will kick you. I want people who, no matter if the form is good, still check in with me and tell me, This is the training session. This is how it went. This was my way in. This one went well. This is not went well. Uh, This is what not went well. I want you to put in the effort. I will help you get you where you want, but I want to see effort from you. If you cannot bring that up, I do not want you as a client. So yeah, if you want to apply for that, the only thing I ask of you is that you are serious about it. Thank you. I'm still not sure about this camera angle. Is it too high? Maybe it's too low. (laughs) Witness me. I am John. You and your 280 squat. 130 kilo. Chris calculated that for me. Thank you very much, Chris. So today we're going to talk. Today. Today we are going to talk about carbs. Now, why is that? (sighs) A while back, I showed you the new, what was it? Was that a food cylinder? It wasn't a food pyramid. I believe it was a food cylinder or something. And according to the same people who said, we're going to die of the common cold and you're going to lose your job if you weren't going to get the jab, just saying. This could be coincidence. But these same same people, these same people, (laughs) 285. 285. 
Apologies. So it's 132 and a half. My bad, John. <laughs> I misspoke. Still, it's a great squad. But okay. They want you to get 20% of your pr- intake from animal based products. And the rest is all carbs and junk. And I'm like, this is nonsense. So yesterday, I had a match. And apparently, she was a so-called specialist. So-called specialist. So I was like, okay, this could be interesting. And she helped epileptic people and whatever. Now, I happen to know that a ketogenic diet has a lot of benefits for people with epilepsy. There have been signs of reduction in epileptic attacks when put on a keto diet. So I asked her about that. And mind you, this is some like educated, graduated, whatever. Well, you know what? The the ketogenic diet is a very strict diet and it's hard to maintain, you know. Like the best thing to do is just stick with the food pyramid. I'm like, "What? What? Stick with the food pyramid? Have you seen that stupid thing?" What? And this is educated. SMRT I are so smart. It's like, what? Is this what you got? Is this what the professionals learn these days? Ketogenic diet is very hard to keep up. It's very hard to maintain, you know? It's like, no, it is not. No, it is not. It's not hard. It's very satiating. It makes it easier. It's like, what the hell? Well, the, the food pyramid. Oh, that same thing that tells you to eat like breakfast cereal, that sugar pumped crap. Oh, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that, and we will have no concern whatsoever. We are totally not in an obese epidemic. Don't look over here. There's nothing to see here, people. Please move along. Ugh. And, yes, I do have a window by that side. Unfortunately, I I want more windows. I would have loved to have, like, a window there. Just more light. More light in this room. If I would have a window like right behind me, I would probably move the desk so the window will be in front of me. And you could see my books and a couple of the ships. <laughs> Are you wearing a turtleneck because you're releasing the new whammon pulling iPhone? Well, I wish. I wish I was, but that's a black turtleneck, my friend. That's a black turtleneck. But the whole thing about carbs and kind of like, do we really need them? The only thing I can think of is that you want a quick energy boost when you're doing physical, hard physical labor, things like that, or maybe like in strength training that you want the glucose storage, some quick, easy access, yada, 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 yada. Fortunately, somebody far smarter than I am and more educated than I am wrote a post about this, and that is what we're going to discuss today. And I will, I will, I will, I will put the get over here link to this in the chat. Let's see, where is it? Can you see it? What side is that thing on? There we go. There it is. <laughs> John isn't wrong. Oh, and now you stop the camera. Fuck off. John isn't wrong, but that's not why I wore the turtleneck. Just saying. Very funny. And convenient. Uh, let's see. Oh, here we go. There we go. Hey, Daniel. Good to see you. Good morning, sir. I hope you are enjoying your coffee as well. We are just about to get into it. I have posted the link here. Let's get educated, shall we? <clears throat> Do strength trainees really need carbs? This is a guest post from Calvin Hyun, Hyun, inspired by our online PT course. Calvin did a great job challenging the current dogma by summarizing the relevant facts without going into excessive detail. 
Carbohydrates once had a terrible reputation with false claims of it being a health-destroying, fat-storing demon. Many fitness professionals have done a great job at debunking all these nasty rumors, but now it seems carbs are getting over-admired. Many coaches will claim you need a ton of carbs or else your hormones and performance will tank rapidly. Fitness professionals are now overemphasizing carbs simply because if everyone else is doing it, it must be true, right? Yeah, because if your friends dr jump off a bridge, you got to jump after him. Not to mention, you'll sound like a war hero to Gen Pop followers for promoting Pop-Tarts and pasta. However, the truth is, unless you're a high-level athlete playing an ultra-demanding sport, your carbohydrate needs just aren't that high in most practical scenarios, even for advanced lifters and gym enthusiasts. <laughs> when someone tries to tell me my favorite macro is overrated, fats, get your fats. Before I jump into all the research, I just want to clarify, I'm not bashing high-carb diets. I am. Don't get hostile with me just because you worship bread. I think bread is poverty food. I'm not going to lie. I, sorry, it's bread? Like, really? Bread? I don't know, man. Like, I don't know. I just... Yeah. Not a big fan. Like maybe grilled cheese sandwiches or whatever, but in general, I'm kind of like, ah, just give me, give me something else, give me bacon or whatever. I'll I'll rather eat a whole package of ham than bread. I love bread too, and high carb diets can work fine. I'm simply addressing the exaggerated claims made about high carb diets, just like many coaches have already been doing to low carb ketogenic diets for the last few years. Although ketogenic diets have been proven time and time again to have more health benefits than any other diet, just say. Intellectual honesty goes, goes both ways, my friend. Carbs are oversimplified and misunderstood. If you ask the average coach a brief summary of the macronutrients, they'll tell you protein is for muscle satiety for muscle satiety satiation i'll just say satiation fat is for hormonal health nutrition absorption and carbs are for performance energy recovery not a bad overview but this oversimplification commonly seen in the form of instagram infographics does more harm than good it leaves out much nuance and consequently, people think carbs are incredibly crucial for performance, energy, and recovery, despite not being true. The science behind why you don't need that many carbs. Menno Ansomans is, is the one who originally provided me most of this data and got me thinking more skeptically about carbs in recent years. Let's start with the mechanisms of energy production. Now, this is all the stuff which is good for me to reread because I forgot a lot of this. Most of my training is keep it simple, stupid, which a lot of people fail at. So like the basics I have mastered pretty much when it comes to like the schedules and how to perform exercises. And with diet, it's kind of like the same thing because your beginning recreational lifter is not going to worry about the hormonal process of certain foods and things like that. Now, when you get to like the high level performance performers and peak level athletes, that's where like the nitty gritty of the science really comes into play because winning or losing is in the detail. So it's good for me to reread this as well. I found a new whammer to argue with about a very specific thing. God damn it, Baron. <laughs> Another great topic, Jack. Thank you, Daniel. I appreciate that. Your body has three energy systems to acquire ATP, which supplies your body with energy for everything you do. 
these energy systems contribute to different degrees sequentially, but in overlapping fashion depending on the demand. The first energy system is the aerobic system, which oxidizes fat, carbs, and even amino acids. Some people think of this system for cardio, despite it being highly active in strength training. This system relies on mitochondrial respiration, making its output limited by oxygen. As VO2 max increases and oxygen becomes limited to meet the demand, the other two systems contribute more. So this is kind of your endurance, the VO2 max. The next energy system called phosphagene system is not limited by oxygen and provides ATP rapidly, but also gets depleted quickly after about 20 to 30 seconds of demanding work. It can replenish a bit quicker if muscles are saturated with supplemented creatine, which every bro is already taking. As VO2 max becomes limiting and the phosphagene system cannot keep up, the glycosolytic system takes over. It breaks down carbs without being limited by oxygen and contributes to about half of ATP production in concentric dominant sustained power outputs like a one-minute sprint or a sequence of takedowns. Carbs, by definition, are the primary fuel source for exercise. And after this overview, which is commonly taught in many courses, many fit pros conclude carbs are the fast energy source, therefore prescribing high carb intakes. However, carbs are fast in the sense that they're an efficient substrate in your body, not fast in the sense of if I eat more exogenous if I eat more exogenous carbs, I'll get increasing doses of personal records being set. Glucose specifically can also be made without carbohydrates and in traditional strength training settings with sets under a minute and long rest periods. Endogenous carbs are rarely a limiting factor considering the interactions of the energy systems. Furthermore, strength training doesn't rely on blood glucose as much as other styles of training. Lifting utilizes muscle glycogen, stored glycogen, glucose, and even then doesn't use up that much. So it's not that if you just eat carbs, all of a sudden you're going to have a lot more fast energy and you can sprint through your training session. No, really, your glycogen stores are fine. Your body already has plenty stored of carbs in the form of glycogen, which just because it's primary, primarily used over blood glucose doesn't mean it's, it uses much. <laughs> oh, Pepe. Oh, Pepe. But I'm so hardcore and trained like an animal, bro. I must be using so much glycogen. No, you're not, bro. The proof is in the pudding. Bodybuilders who did 15 sets of compound quad work and five sets of isolation quad work, all to failure, only depleted 26% of muscle glycogen. Bodybuilders who did 30 seconds of hard leg extensions paired with one minute of rest for 30 minutes straight, only depleted 28% of muscle glycogen. I don't know of any research in, pr in practical strength training workouts depleting more than 40% of muscle glycogen. Furthermore, muscle glycogen is highly regulated. The more you lose, the faster it replenishes. replenishes. The body is a magnificent thing. The body is not going to let you die and get exhausted like out of nowhere. Because yes, walking, talking, breathing, all that takes energy as well. Live streaming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Imagine being a Brit and having the nerve to call someone French. Yeah, I know. 
Best part of this stream is watching the Dutch guy stumble over scientific terms. Oh, very funny, John. Uh -huh -huh. Could be a placebo effect. I do like to have my breakfast before workout now. You know, some people just function better that way. I have to say, in general, I like training fasted. In general. But that's mostly because like that one meal a day thing, after the one meal, I am just like done. And I like eating in the morning. So, yeah. Especially now with the days getting darker, getting shorter. It's kind of kind of have to. I have to keep that summer schedule up where it's like you wake up, have your coffee, work out, go walk, etc. Do the things you need to do. And then you eat. But now it's kind of like, ah, oh, shit, it's cold in the morning. Uh, and whether you like it or not, when you eat, you get a little bit warmer. Uh, it could be a placebo effect, but could just be that your circadian rhythm is different. And you are one of those people who's like, no, I want to eat first. I get sluggish after I eat. And if I just have caffeine, I'm way less sluggish. I'm more energetic and I'm ready to train. So it's not a be all end all here. Mm hmm. Does it make me work out better? No, but I don't like to work out when I'm hungry. Then don't. Then eat before you work out. Like I said, what works your what works for man? What works for you? What is the best schedule? The one that you can follow. My job is to figure out what works for you. Pokemoning. Exactly. There is research to suggest that placebo effects are actually beneficial. Mm hmm I feel like I have way more energy when I fast for 18 plus hours. Is that weird? Uh, that's the thing, like I mentioned just now with eating. Some, depending on the portions, like with me, my, personally, me, eating makes me sluggish after that. So I like to do all the things I need to do before I eat because I get less sluggish. So depending on what you eat, Dre, as well, depending on what you eat, it's not even that weird. Not even that weird. Uh, look up what I've learned. Look up what I've learned. I'm rarely hungry, just thirsty most of the time. Yeah, depending on your diet as well. Like I've heard that from my ex who went on a ketogenic diet. She was thirsty all the time. She would drink like liters of water. She's like, I'm still thirsty. I'm like, okay, interesting. That is interesting. So I can't give you the concrete answer on that, where that stems from. Uh, what I've learned has a couple of good videos on that. But, da, 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 le Google. <laughs> okay, I walked right into that one. <laughs> you go, sir. You go. <laughs> uh huh. More energy when fasting. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> Lift up your eating energy with intermittent fasting. Oh, because it makes your metabolism more effective. So that's why, Dre. Oh, yeah, what I've learned is great. <laughs> I love you too, Spurg. Sloth. Hello, Sloth. Good to see you. Uh, let us continue with the article. How long is this thing? Ah, it's not that long anymore. Long story short, your glycogen replenishes, replenishing needs just aren't that high as a lifter because newsflash strength training isn't that intense compared to endurance-based sport. You might feel tired after a one rep max deadlift or your legs might be on fire after a few high rep sets of leg extensions, but that's nothing as far as glycogen loss. 
high demanding long duration sports like cycling soccer etc lasting well over one hour is where glycogen loss actually becomes pronounced ask a marathon runner or a martial arts fighter how they feel after hours of practice they feel utterly deceased that's what true glycogen depletion feels like what about post-workout anabolism anabolics even though lifters don't deplete much glycogen you don't need to keep them full to the brim either a review on this topic concluded for resistance exercise, glycogen availability seems to have no significant influence on the anabolic effects induced by resistance exercise. Thinking you need your glycogen stores immediately full at all time for maximum anabolic signaling is like thinking your car will only work optimally if you keep the gas tank overflowing. Yeah, this is where you get the guys in the gym who are like, oh, I just got done my, my work. I'm getting a protein shake. And like, immediately the first thing they do is like a a artistic spurg run to the locker room and like glug that protein shake with whatever down because oh, the anabolic feeling window which apparently is 72 hours so there's really no need to act like an artist it's like like it's nice having it out of the way where it's like yeah i already ate but like this, this spastic behavior of needing it right away is just a bit, I don't know, man. Gym cell is a thing for a reason. Just gym cell is a thing for a reason. This is what, by the way, the old maxim, be attractive, don't be unattractive means. Be attractive is the whole body thing. Don't be unattractive is the whole behavioral thing. So you can be jacked as fuck, but if you're asked, if you're acting like an artist by running through the gym to get to your protein shake ASAP because you're afraid you're not going to get the most amount of gains, that's unattractive. Just saying. You also don't need carbs post-workout to maximize insulin's anabolic response either. When you consume adequate protein, insulin's anabolic response is already maximized. Adding carbs post-workout doesn't hurt, but it doesn't improve muscle protein balance as commonly claimed. So, as we like to say in Dutch, do no maar gewoon, dat doe je al gek genoeg. Which kind of means, if you just act normal, you're already crazy enough. Don't rush things and don't be an idiot about it. If you're going to eat, it's going to be absorbed. Don't worry. What about pre-workout carbs? Many people cite studies showing pre-workout carbs are beneficial, but these studies don't apply to the average lifter because they're usually done in intense endurance or concurrent sports. Done in conditions where participant, participants trained twice a day. Done in an extremely glycogen-depleted state. Comparing pre-workout carbs versus faster training not equating for total energy intake. People. Even with disadvantageous study designs, we have plenty of studies showing no difference between pre-workout carbs and other conditions on strength training performance. One study found pre-workout carbs were just as effective as an energy-matched protein and carb condition. Even in high-intensity endurance training, just the taste, texture, perception of having carbs perform just as well as actually having carbs. This is another reason why saying carbs is the energy macro um, is the energy macro is misleading. Physiologically, all macros provide you with energy because you know thermodynamics, bruh. For the average person hitting the gym, as long as they're not training fasted, getting a ton of pre-workout carbs is not necessary. Maybe I should get them then, but I never had any issue with it. Once pre-workout protein is met, very little, if any carbs, is needed for additional benefit. If you still want more energy before your workout, you can get the calories from any macro at that point. 
you're not cool enough for carbs. If you look at the literature as a whole in traditional strength training, there's no additional benefit to even chronic high carb intake. The results are the same when energy is matched and assuming carbs aren't unrealistically low. People who actually need a lot of carbs at a certain minimum, especially with timing protocols, are athletes with the following characteristics. Plays a high demanding sport like MMA, water polo, or triathlons, not a half court pickup game of basketball. Trains twice per day or more. Trains well over one hour. Performs high intensity, long duration, strength endurance work like advanced crossfitters. Trains concurrently, consistently. So, kind of like nobody in this chat. Like, Nobody in this chat probably does that. Unless I have some high-level athletes here, which I uh which I uh doubt. You don't need that excessive m amount of carbs. Uh yeah, pretty much, sloth. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know anything about the Velocity diet, but 36 eggs sounds awesome. <laughs> what do you think about a liquid diet? I think it's stupid, Billy. Not you. It's a it's an interesting question, but I think it's a bit of a cop-out. Like, look, can you get all your macronutrients in a liquid diet? Yes, but are you missing a lot of things? Yes. Like, you're not chewing you're not really consuming you're taking a fast approach to things it's not whole foods it's probably you're probably talking about supplement powders which are micronutrient deficient compared to whole foods they just are operation evil creates an during create an during workout drink for the gym cells and make an easy six fix. Yeah, that's what Logan Paul does. Oh, don't kick my ass. <laughs> are only fans girls considered athletes? No, no, they are not. Hey, B-Boy Red, good to see you. B-Boy Red 13. Seed set. Uh, every gym bro knows that running to get your protein shake is a no-no. Running is cardio and cardio kills your gains. Ooh, good one. Ooh, good one. I didn't even think of that. Even walking would kill their gains. Oh, I didn't mean supplements and eat not the majority. No, no, no. But it's like, would you want to eat a liquefied steak? Would you want that? I think your teeth will be harmed in the process of that. Gotta go. I'll catch the rest later. Choose. See you soon, Chris. I hope you enjoy your day. And I'm looking forward to the videos tomorrow. Grab a little bit of coffee. Oh, and we're almost done. We like to think we're prestigious snowflakes who have to hit a certain carb intake and that our carb timing matters so much to maximize performance. Hypertrophy under the barbell. But we're simply not cool for carbs. Cool enough. Unfortunately, even the most advanced lifters will at most do traditional strength training four to five times a week for 50 to 75 minutes, and maybe a couple short bouts of steady state cardio during the week. That might require a lot of calories depending on your size, but that doesn't justify epic carb requirements or meticulous carb time. So kind of what this all comes down to is stop worrying so goddamn much on the goddamn details. And just make sure you hit your total caloric intake and the minimum amount of protein, which is 1.6 grams times your body weight in kilos. Fat and carbs, personal preference. Does ketogenic diet have healthy benefits? A lot. I'm not going to go through all the research, but it has a lot of health benefits. Do some people perform better on a higher carb diet than a keto diet? Yes, but that all depends on the individual. But stop worrying about the total amount of everything as long as you get your total amount of calories and your minimum amount of protein. There we go. For the average lifter reading this, 
Once protein fat intake are sufficient and you're not eating desperately low carb, the remainder of your macros are irrelevant. You can choose whatever to fill those calories based on preference. What did I just say? What did Jack just say? And it won't make a big difference whether it's carb, protein, or fat. Thank you. Come again. So, yes. So, that's kind of it. Do you really need carbs? Not as much as you think. Hello, Kate. Good to see you. Oh, I just... Damn it. Uh, where is it? Uh, carbs. Carbs. Three. There it is. Here is the link to the article. Hey, did you know, by the way, I apparently have like an audience of, what was it? 20% women? Something like that? 20% of my audience is women. It's like, what the hell? What? I didn't expect that. That's interesting. I only know like, like Kate and Jennifer. Like, where's the rest? I have an Instagram, you know. I have it. Oh. Steak and Shake is a restaurant, not a menu option. <laughs> oh, Baron. Oh, aren't the Maasai cow herders on a milk and blood diet during the herding? Yeah, I heard uh, Paul Saladino talk about that. But even though Paul Saladino has done a tremendous amount of positive things for like the carnivore community and the whole diet community as a whole. I draw the line at blood drinking where it's like, oh mate, I don't care how fucking healthy that is. That is just not happening. Anybody of you seen that Jeffrey Dahmer documentary? I looked away when he started drinking blood where I was like, oh, oh my God, that is just bleh, disgusting. I never heard of a steak and shake. Yeah. Um, I've I've heard it drop. Note again, B Boy Red noted it. Oh, they sell burgers and fries too. <laughs> we are special. Don't don't get ahead of yourself, Kate. Don't get ahead of yourself. I was tempted to get on TRT like some of Jack's colleagues. Why would you do that, Billy? Why? I think no man under forty should get on TRT. In all honesty, I really think. No man under 40, unless with real bad health issues, which a doctor has looked at. So I don't think that's a good idea. But Billy, you're here to learn, and I'm glad you did. <laughs> Dormer diet, technically keto. Jesus Christ, Baron. <laughs> well, tech. Technically, you're not wrong, but you are. <laughs> hey, I'm not saying, Donald, that you should. I'm not saying that you should. I'm saying when you're at 40 is the only time I would consider it. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't. I am not the man who said that. I am not the guy sitting here, you should do X, Y, and Z. No, 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 no. Okay, only when it comes to lifting, you should lift. And you should prioritize the compact movements and blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's the thing. But I'm not sitting here saying what... Um, medicine you should take. That That is a doctor thing. Ooh, Billy, that ain't good. Ooh, that ain't good, man. That ain't good. Just finished binge watching the Troy Francis Jack Napier Art of Seduction series, and I loved it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, B Boy Red 13. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I'm glad you liked it. I love Robert Greene's books. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the latest ones. I'm not a big fan of the latest ones where you can you can see, you can read. He is uh pandering a bit. Is panning her a bit, where it's like, oh, macho behavior is uh, covering insecurity and all those like maxims, where it's like, oh no, 
Macho men are insecure and strong females have been there always. Where it's like, yeah, 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 whatever. Whatever. I did like the chapter about narcissists, but that's about it. And death, the meditation on death in uh, Laws of Human Nature. Is Robert Greene a brilliant guy who's just phoning it in now? I just got Mastery. Mastery is great. Mastery is a great book and is a must read. Uh, Billy, I thought Robert Greene is that. I asked Rolo back then because Rolo mentioned this too, where it's like, yeah, he's kind of pandering and he's kind of losing his edge. And I'm like, yeah, but this is the same guy who wrote 48 Laws of Power. You think he's pandering on purpose? Because like the, the um, author world is ideological as hell. He's like, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Ooh, alpha sloth. Depends on your T levels. Mine's been below 300 my whole life. Get your blood levels checked. Below 600, you are scaled. Try lifting and then maybe to your T. And that's the thing. I truly believe in try to lift it naturally first. Lift. Eat a proper fat-based diet. Sleep well. This is the biggest one. Like, you can lift, you can eat right, but if your sleep sucks, you're fucked. Sleep needs a priority. Sleep is a priority. Just get that through your head. Sleep is a must. Some people get along, get along fine on six hours. I'm one of those rare folks who's like, sleep six hours and boom, like, done, energized, awake, let's go. Aren't there studies that show uh, most guys have less testosterone than men in their 60s? Yeah, but most young men like don't do shit. They sit around a lot. They don't lift. They don't walk. Very sanitary lifestyle. It's like, yeah. I'll stick to mastery, art of seduction, and 40 laws. Um, try 33 strategies of war as well. War is a great book. It's underrated, but it's good. It is good. Yeah, sleep well is underrated in the current state of the 24 7 52 per year society. It is. It is. I really don't get that. But, oh, maybe I do get it because, like, if you're a worker drone, you need to work as much as possible. This is something I learned from my dad, even though my dad's a great guy. There is one thing where I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to do that like you. He was like, all up in work. Work was his life. And I'm kind of like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I have better things to do than work. You know? Or at least... Well, maybe I'm putting it wrong. I wouldn't let work go over family kind of thing. Like, I have more... I hold more value to, to friends and relationships than work. But I mean, that's me. Same, all I need is five to six hours of sleep. Yeah, but those are like good hours of sleep. Those are good hours of sleep. Are women who lift easier because of increased testosterone? No, I don't think they are, Billy. It is an interesting question, but no. I don't think they are. Because like, their default setting is still... Is the guy better than she is? Like, girls who lift know they look good. They just do. So they're probably going to go for a guy who's the biggest bencher in the gym, I think. Would be the most uh, obvious answer. Would be the most obvious answer. Unless you're really good at game, things like that. Some guys uh, don't like muscular women. Just like tall women. Uncle Vass wrote about this, that like tall women for him are a go because barely anybody approaches tall women. Found a hack. <laughs> Kid. <laughs> Billy, you're entertaining and frustrating at the same time. It is a uh, it is a good challenge to have in the chat. It's a good challenge to have in the chat because I know you mean well, but also I know you'd love to see people... Uh, go off on you but it is an interesting question would they be more into it uh, could very well be 
but would they be more into it with you? Uh, that's kind of the thing with the whole, with everything, where it's like, oh, this improves sex drive. Yeah, but not per se with you. Just because she's horny doesn't mean she's horny for you, you know? There's nuance to that. It's nuance to that. Nuance, people. <laughs> IT and women is like 200-ish for reference. <laughs> Which isn't that high, people. Which isn't that high. The hustle culture promotes working nonstop. Yeah, I don't get that either. I don't get that either. It's like, yeah, man, 80 hours a week. Why? Why? I am of the camp of work smarter, not harder. That's the same thing I do with my clients when it comes to lifting. You don't want to be that guy who, like, spends hours in the gym turns 40 and now can't lift anymore. I want my guys to get the most amount of results with a bare minimum of two times per week and be able to lift for their entire life to get the most benefit out of it. And if you're interested in personal training by me, the monthly accountability program is now closed. But if you want to be updated on the monthly accountability program and the position that could be free, get on my email newsletter get the exercise performance course for free and be updated when a spot is available for the monthly accountability program. Thank you very much for listening to this commercial. Back to our regular programming. So what I was saying is, as Kate says, everything is with you. Everything is with you. Holding lifters accountable. Well, Baron, it is. We always make the joke about holding women accountable. You need, like guys who say, I want to go to the gym, blah, blah, blah. You have to hold them accountable. Nice renaming of the group, by the way. Thank you, Tsi. Thank you, Tsi. I wasn't sure about it, but like I've been almost doing this for a year now. And it is way more about, about accountability than it is about that actual consultation. Because I want you guys to participate when you enter or when you decide to participate in that group. I actually want you to participate. Even, even if your squad is perfect, I still want to see it. I still want to see you go for it. I still want to see you go for it. I want to see you improve. Because the diet, the lifting, the sleep, everything has to come together nicely in a golden trifecta sort of say and i want to see that my front squats are terrible lol well if you ever need a form check if you ever need a form check and you don't want to go into the monthly consultation group sorry the monthly accountability program oh damn force of habit people you can always book me for a uh, personal consultation right here if you're interested in that my boy red and why are you doing front squats that's a question as well why not back squats why front squats is it because you cannot perform back squats very well? Then the question would be, why can't you perform back squats very well? And that's an interesting question. <laughs> I find that women over 30 contribute a lot more to conversations because they're desperate. <laughs> it sounds cruel, but yeah. I find that women who are into you contribute most to the conversation. My humble opinion. Uh, a tibia injury. Ooh. That's interesting. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Oh, damn. On the shin? Hmm. First of all, I am not a physical therapist. I am not a physical therapist. So let's get that straight. <laughs> My girlfriend won't stop talking. I love that. Chad, how can somebody not stop talk to you? How can somebody? But okay. Uh, I would go for the machines. Leg extensions. And leg... Whoa. Ah, okay, that might not be the best since it's your shin. Oof. Mm. 
That's an interesting one. Now, back extensions you can do. Back extensions you can do. Back extensions you can do. Uh, oh, for the legs and that one. Oh. I would try very light belt squats if they are possible and see a physical therapist. And I've said this before. Remember in our Discord when guys who had actual injuries started asking in the Discord, what should I do? Mate, if you have a physical injury, go see a professional instead of asking strangers on the internet. Disclaimer, I am not a physical therapist. I am a licensed personal trainer. If you have an actual injury, go see a professional. I can advise you to do certain exercises, which the main premise would be find out what doesn't hurt. But that is an advice I would not tell you to do. I would invite you to try after you've seen a professional. Thank you. Alpha Sloth. Conversation is overrated if you can't get better. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Sloth gets it. <laughs> oh, Chad. Being an ISFJ paired with an ESFP really works. Myers-Briggs. Oh, my God. Chick crack. Nice. Jack needs to get Chad six-packs abs ASAP. So he can upgrade his harem. Hey, I already have that. Oh, we need to get Chad six pack abs. I could get them. I could give uh if he wants to put in the work. That physical therapist said it's just a bone hit that needs some rest to get fixed. Well, slowly but surely, find out what you can do. Like I said, back extensions on the machine. You should be able to do because your shins are not in the movement i would try belt squats just very light belt squats and stop as soon as it's hurt now is the time to figure out what you can do instead of focusing on what you can't do i had a client once who said i can't go to the gym because i broke my toe i'm like it's your toe on your arms he's like no why well then you can train arms and chest can't you oh well yeah you're right like, is your toe on your quads? No. Well, then you can train your quads, can't you? Oh, well, yeah, I guess you're right. It's like, yeah. Figure out what you can do instead of focusing on what you can't do. <sighs> there we go. Do I like kettlebells? Ah, I don't see the need for them. If you have a barbell and dumbbells, I don't really see the need for kettlebells. No honesty. That is it from me for today. Did I miss any super chats? Or any member chats? Did I miss anything? No, I did not. Um, if you want to support the channel, first of all, just click the like button. I really appreciate it. It's free doesn't cost you anything, and it tells YouTube that you like this message. Um, subscribe if you haven't. Apparently, 20% or something of that of you who watch this isn't subscribed, so why not? We're almost hitting 3,000, which I think is amazing. Uh, if you want to support the channel, you can become a member by clicking the Join button, and you will get... Where is it? The Book of Puck audiobook for free and the exercise performance course for free. Now, if you can't see the join button, just click this link and you'll get there. And you will get there. Um, anything else? Oh, yeah. The monthly accountability program is now closed. That is my personal training service where I only do five guys who together in our private discord go and do the work 
that's it. If you don't want to do the work, then please don't apply. Because I have a new rule where I will be kicking people out if they do not participate in it. So if you want to be updated on when a spot is free for the monthly accountability program, you can get on my email newsletter and be informed and updated when a spot for the monthly accountability program is free again and get the exercise performance course for free. That was it for me for today. Hit like, subscribe if you haven't, comment down below, thoughts of this show. Link to article is in the chat and I will see you. Oh, announcement. Announcement. Thursday, Truthcast will not be on this time. No. Truthcast will be earlier. Probably at night for most of you guys. Because I am doing an interview with Andy. Now you might say, who is Andy? Who is that? Tell us. Andy is the author of the best Tinder guide on the internet. Of Kill Your Inner Loser. Look him up on YouTube. I'm going to have him on on Thursday. I'm looking forward to that. He has contributed a lot of work to the online dating game. And we're just going to sit down, have a coffee, and enjoy. So look forward to that, and I will see you guys soon. Cheers. Totins. And remember. Birth control makes women unattractive and crazy. She said it, not me. Cheers.